Hey, welcome. Uh, I'm Ted Ong with Prudent Investors Network, and I am an instructor, instructor in the Trustee Certification Program at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, we have with us Mike Andrulis, who is one of the graduates of the program, and uh, just wanted to welcome you, Mike, and invite you to take the, a little bit of time to share your background and how you found out about the Cal State Fullerton program and what it's meant to you. Sure. So thank you, Ted. It's, a, it's an honor to be here. It's great to see you again. I thoroughly enjoyed uh, our class together um, where you co-taught it with uh, bringing on your, your uh, mentee, uh, Jeremy, into the program, who uh, seems like he's doing a great job. Um, I am a, a principal at a new consulting firm uh, Andrew Lisson Company. I've been working in a professional nonprofit fundraising for more than 22 years um, and wanted to extend my services into what I felt was a tangential area of fiduciary service as uh, trustees and conservator. Um, you know, why did I choose Cal Fullerton for my fiduciary program? Um, simply put, it's reputation. Um, I like to do my homework before engaging in anything I do. So I attended a few meetings of fiduciary groups uh, and met privately with two professional fiduciaries locally in Los Angeles County. And everyone I spoke to recommended the professional fiduciary management program for trustees and conservatives at Cal State Fullerton. Uh, for me, it was a, a glowing endorsement. Um, and as I guess uh, there was a newer program um, started up by, um, uh, UC Riverside, I believe, uh, everyone still pointed back to uh, Cal State Fullerton as the premier program. Um, you know, being new to fiduciary studies, I found that uh, all the courses uh, were very interesting and very memorable to me. I felt the course material was complete and informative and the faculty were very current and engaging. And the interaction via Zoom with my classmates instructor made it far more interesting. Um, yeah, I was thankful to have uh, Joe Etienne for standards and also for trust administration. And you know, the word on the street uh, was that the management of the investment portfolio was quite a challenging or difficult course. So thankfully you, uh, Professor Ong and your co-instructor co Jeremy Lau made this course manageable, interesting, and relevant. Well, and I have to agree that your recommendation to stay on top of the coursework from day one was the most val invaluable piece of advice for this course, as well as for the courses and the uh, other courses in the certificate program. And I do have to admit, uh, almost shamefully, um, that I had originally signed up for the course a few quarters earlier, and unfortunately fell behind due to work and life events. And I had to, uh, I spoke with you via email and I had to withdraw because I felt I'd missed way too much material and may not be able to catch up. So Mike, students come from varied backgrounds, especially those that are considering becoming fiduciaries. We have some that come from care management backgrounds, paralegal, uh, accounting, investing, real estate, um, many different life experiences. Can you share a little bit of your life experience prior to taking the course and uh, how you feel students would handle the coursework uh, depending on the different experiences they've had in life? Sure, happy to. Um, so my background came from the financial services. Um, Right out of college, I was an assistant uh, foreign currency trader on uh, the Commodities Corporation desk in Princeton, New Jersey. And then when the uh, uh, fund manager was relocating out to Orange County, uh, they cut back on the desk and it was kind of that, you know, last in first out scenario. And so I got uh, laid off from the, from the desk and then immediately took a job with uh, Merrill Lynch in um, their kind of marketing administration home offices in uh, Princeton, Plainsboro, New Jersey. Well, after working with them and working, you know, directly with the top retail brokers in the nation, I too decided to become uh, licensed. So I got my Series 7 and 63 
uh, as well as life insurance uh, licenses. And then went into production myself, uh, first with uh, Merrill Lynch and then with uh, Dean Witter. And uh, I got out of that because I felt that there was a big push for selling products versus managing one's client's asset. And I was really trying to take a CFP approach, a certified financial planner approach to my business and really managing their assets uh, and working closely with their accountants and their attorneys for their goals. So during the stock market sell-off of uh, 94, um, where I was doing a lot of handholding because I brought a lot of CD money out of the banks into the markets and the mutual funds, I wasn't making a living. So I decided to get out of the business um, rather than sacrifice my, I, what I felt were my principles and my, my goals to my clients. And then uh, did a short stint in mortgage banking. And then in 98, went into fundraising for higher education and healthcare. So I have that financial services background, but I think everybody comes to the table with a different background, whether it's some nurses come to the table, whether it's some attorneys come to the table, whether it's some um, accountants come into the program. Um, we each have different skill sets and each of those different skill sets, I think are important to working as a fiduciary with your client, whether you're working uh, with um, the trustees or the conservatives. And on a personal note, um, back in the, uh, mid to late 90s, I started caring for my grandmother um, in our home um, with my mother. So I had a personal uh, interaction of with her and having to really kind of take over her ass, take over her financial affairs, take over her health affairs. So I think all of that brought to me uh, a certain strength, but everyone comes to the program with a strength. And then through the coursework and through your instruction and the instruction of the other instructors, um, we make up that deficit. So, um, so you had pretty, uh, you had pretty broad experience actually. Uh, you had some care management, some uh, financial. Uh, you, so you uh, had seen a little. You would seen what it took to be a fiduciary because you were actually uh, helping in that role. So which courses were more difficult for you and which were more meaningful for you? Sure. Um, I think uh, like when you start any kind of academic program, um, developing your bandwidth, developing, opening up your toolbox so that tools can be installed and placed into there. I, um, you know, the standards class was just new to me even though it kind of covers a broad area, it was just new to me. So I was, I was trying to soak up all the information and look at it from an academic perspective uh, and a coursework perspective. Um, you know, that gave me that awakening and awareness really to what the fiduciary does formally. Uh, one of my greatest awakenings or aha moments were in the conservators of protected persons and advanced healthcare directives as I had very little experience professionally or individually in that area uh, and having aging parents, having taken care of uh, a, a grandmother in my own home, this was quite relative in, uh, to me personally. Um, I do have to say, um, you know, your coursework, uh, the amount of the work that was involved probably was greater than more most of the other courses. So from strictly from a volume standpoint, um, it was challenging but my, my professional background, as well as your good uh, guidance, just to, to stay on top of the work and read ahead and get your coursework done right away, uh, kept me honest for uh, those periods in the class. Great. So the, if a person did not have investment background, how do you think they would fare in the class? I think with your and Jeremy's instruction, they would fare uh, okay if they have kind of an interest and an aptitude in that area. Um, if they don't have that aptitude, then they'll have to you know, sweat a little bit more probably and work a little harder than most. But I had to do that for the other classes. Um, I had no 
you know, I have no accounting background except for in my um, MBA program and you know, briefly for an economics background in, in my undergraduate. Um, but I had to work hard in the other classes because I was deficit in those skill sets. Right. So I think uh, every student in, in the program will have to work harder or a little less hard in each class, depending upon what their background is. Now, so if someone comes from a nursing background, they'll have a much easier time in that, um, uh, forgetting the name of the class, the um, uh, advanced care directive class. Right. I'm sorry, you were saying something. Uh, so um, not all students end up becoming professional fiduciaries. Many of them are acting as family fiduciaries or they're just testing the waters to see whether or not this would be a compatible career change. Um, so right. the, the, I guess the, the question I have is that if someone took the courses and ended up not being a fiduciary, uh, do you think that it would have been valuable time or would have been time that, uh, that they might not have felt was productive? I think when you're, if you're not, don't have the intention of becoming a professional fiduciary and you are doing it for personal or family reasons, naturally, I think it's time well spent because then it gives you the toolbox, the understanding, the experience, uh, the forms to manage your family and take care of your family. And that investment for that purpose is, is you know, from a personal perspective, is probably almost more and more valuable than taking care of clients. Even though we, have, you know, as a fiduciary, you have a professional responsibility to take care of your clients. So right. I think it's it's a very valuable whether you want to become a professional fiduciary or whether you're doing it for personal or family reasons. That's an excellent point because the, all of us have to deal with the issues of aging. All of us will deal with the issues that. But actually, fiduciaries are just dealing with people's lives, maybe a little bit more complex because they're coming into situations where uh, there's diminished capacity or other extenuating circumstances. Uh, but uh, the, the role of a fiduciary is basically they have to be a uh, jack of all trades. Um, I was at lunch with a fiduciary at a conference. And she was sharing with the, the table that we're uh, sitting at how so many of her friends are just amazed at all the things that she knows, uh, how to uh, clean out a septic tank, how to replace a roof, uh, what to do if you need to uh, get skilled nursing, uh, all the issues of estate planning and uh, all complicated medical treatments for all different variety of illnesses. And um, as she was reflecting on it, she commented that she realized that she had probably lived 20 lives uh, because of working with her clients. She had experienced so many different things that she would not have experienced. And she was like a surrogate, experiencing them for her clients in yeah. many instances. And um, she said her life was much richer for it, not only from the experiences, but from personal information that she gained that has helped her throughout her life. So that uh, instead of being a novice as she's gone into all these different areas of, uh, you know, considering retirement or uh, having to deal with personal health issues that she's been prepared and uh, has been able to use her professional expertise for her own personal benefit. So I think that uh, agrees with what you're sharing that uh, regardless of whether or not they become professional fiduciaries, the program offers very valuable information for any individual. Many of the students in our classes uh, have indicated that they wish they'd learned these things 20 years ago uh, when they were first investing because it would have impacted the way they invested. So, um, you know, I, yeah. I think that that's uh, good, good information you're sharing. So how is the, I, oh, go ahead. I agree with you. I, you know, I don't want to take away the role of any other professional advisor, but 
in a way, because a fiduciary deals in so many different areas of one's uh, financial, healthcare, um, real life, you know, home living situation. Um, it's almost like they're like, almost like a quarterback. Right. They, they may not be the expert in every area, but they know how to solve them. And one thing I learned, um, even though I uh, am a, was a, you know, series seven license, series 63 life and health license, I've been out of the business a long time, but I now know as a result of your course, the difference between dealing with a financial advisor whose responsibility is to their firm officially, as I was when I was working for Dean Ritter Reynolds, um, or whether you're dealing with someone like yourself and Jeremy and other um, financial advisors who act in a fiduciary capacity with their clients and your first responsibility is to them. Excellent. So uh, how has the fiduciary program improved your career? Sure. So I am only starting my career as a fiduciary. I'm, I'm scheduling the, the uh, exam this summer. I kind of, my timeline got set back due to uh, the COVID-19 pandemic and, and work and me starting um, my own consulting career. Um, I, you know, this fiduciary program at Cal State Fulton has really given me additional career options that were not available to me beforehand. As I shared, a former financial advisor with Dean Reynolds in the early to mid 90s, I worked with accountants and estate planning advisors who were most likely working with conservatives or trustees or beneficiaries. It really wasn't until I moved from New Jersey to Los Angeles and I was involved in the estate planning council here in Los Angeles. And as a former employer, I became aware of the duties with their importance to this web or network of financial advisors and the clients who are trustees, beneficiaries, or conservatives. So as I was working full-time and taking one class per quarter or trimester, I needed to pace myself through both the trustee and conservator classes. And for me, simply learning about what a fiduciary do did or does in the standards and practice class gave me an awakening and, and the awareness of what the fiduciary does. Each of the subsequent classes added to my toolbox or portfolio of skill sets. And um, I feel it's well prepared me to um, you know, become a professional fiduciary and add that to my um, fundraising consulting that I hope to continue. And it's given me through this vast network of alumni from the Cal State Fullerton program, um, it gives, has given me a network for me to reach out to people and to either you know, possibly join their firm or to talk with them about and learn from them so that I'm not reinventing the wheel to um, you know, the do's and don'ts of starting a, my own practice. Excellent. What advice would you have for students that are considering the program? Sure, a great question. Um, I said, I think my advice for students entering the program is to stay on top of their coursework uh, for all other classes, especially your class, the management of the investment portfolio and also take advantage of the great network of instructors and alumni of this program, as I shared earlier. My other advice is for students who are considering a career or coursework in the fiduciary management is to enroll in this program at Cal State Fullerton. I feel it's thorough, proven, and I believe it will prepare you, know, you well for your state licensing exam in a future career, either as a professional fiduciary or to take care of your family or closest friends in their really time of need. Excellent. One of the things that students can uh, participate in, which um, they may not be aware of, it, they can uh, sign up as student members of the Professional Fiduciary Association of California, which is the professional organization uh, for professional fiduciaries. And as student members, they can attend uh, continuing education, uh, conferences, uh, rub shoulders with uh, practicing fiduciaries and participate in the listserv, pose questions, get to know more fiduciaries to find out what area of the fiduciary market they would like to focus on because there are many areas of specialization. So um, taking the program, I think, is uh, an excellent way to broaden your exposure as well as to increase your understanding of 
what a fiduciary does. So are there other aspects? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. May I, let me just add one thing about PFAC. Um, I, you know, in my course of doing my homework uh, in looking at um, enrolling in the program and becoming a fiduciary, I, was, I be, became aware of PFAC through their website. And I actually had attended uh, a PFAC meeting in Long Beach where I met, it was one of the group meetings I had attended so I met, I attended a program, I listened to the conversation, I spoke with them afterwards, and I was quite impressed um, through one, the quality of the, the program through, through the PFAC group in Long Beach, and also um, the willingness of the members who have, many of them had graduated from the program to offer me good and sound advice. Excellent, it's, it's nice to have that uh, feeling of confidence that you can work with people who've gone through the program and they're comfortable sharing with you and helping you in your own uh, career progression. So uh, th that's great to belong to an alumni association that is so deeply involved in the profession. Were there other aspects of the program that were helpful for you after you graduated from the program? Yeah, I think I touched upon it earlier. It's, it's a network of alumni. Everyone who I've met with individually or in group meetings have been helpful, professional, and seems to be on top of their game. And besides that, I would have to say that I've not taken advantage of the other alumni benefits of being an alumnus from Cal State Fullerton or this program and look forward to networking more, taking enrichment classes if and when they become available. And once I practice and have real world experience, hopefully giving back to the program, possibly as an instructor. Well, Mike, thank you for your generous sharing of your time and your experience. We look forward to uh, following your career, learning more about uh, how you uh, become more involved, uh, how uh, the test goes. And, uh, you know, we are just very pleased that a person that, has the integrity you have and the desire to help other people and serve other people is able to expand this ability to bless other people professionally as you pursue this career. So thank you for your time and we look forward to staying in touch. Um, have a wonderful day. Ted, thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. It was an honor to, uh, to speak with you about this. I feel really, as you know, I feel really strongly about the program. And I have to say, my desire to give back to the community started with my mother because she was a local uh, first aider in our central, central New Jersey community of Montgomery Township. And she was volunteering and giving back her time. And then as her children, she grabbed us to be some labor force once in a while and help out with the, the oyster dinners and the rubbish sales. And I did a swimathon for them. And that kind of put me on, in my mind, instilled that the importance of and the uh, need to give back to one's community. And I think in any professional career you undertake, and hopefully more people will consider becoming professional fiduciaries or taking this program to take care of their family, they will continue to be active and involved and give back to their community. Great. And I really appreciate the fact that you have followed your mother's good example. You know, each of us as parents hope that our children are learning to be good citizens and picking up the good traits from us and, you know, hopefully forgetting the bad traits that we might exhibit. And uh, I admire that you have followed your mother's uh, example and uh, it, it really has blessed your life. I can tell from uh, the excitement you have about what you do. So it has. Thank you. Great. Well, thank you very much. And we will stay in touch.